Wow! Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. I tried three different ways to dry aged steak. Find out which one is the cheapest. Now, I love my dry aging experiments, but every time I buy meat, it becomes more and more expensive. So I'm still looking for ways to cut down on cost and see how I can still achieve beautiful meat without spending too much and hopefully help you in the process. So of course my reference is dry aging in a full dry aging cabinet. And there are some huge advantages to use a cabinet like that. However, this cabinet costs thousands of dollars. Now another way to do it is to put your steak in a dry age bag. It basically acts as a membrane to protect your meat from everything that sits on the outside. But in the meantime, it still allows you to expel moisture from the meat. And the final one is the way I used to do it. Before I had money to spend on meat, I would just take the piece of meat, take a tray, put salt in it, and then put the meat on a rack, just slide it in the fridge and let it sit there. And basically it dry aged the meat. But now I have the option to compare these three ways to dry aged steak. So four weeks ago, I took this beautiful piece of ribeye, a gorgeous grain fat piece and I cut it up into three large steaks of around a kilogram. Now in this case, size does matter because with any dry aging technique, there's gonna be waste. And then you still want to have plenty of meat and steaks left over in the end. I took one part of that ribeye roast and I put it in the dry ager like I normally would. You don't have to worry about temperature, you don't have to worry about humidity, and you sure don't have to worry about bacteria with that UV light and the salt block sitting at the bottom. The second piece I put in a membrane. You might recognize this as an umai or a dry aging bag. But to seal off this bag, you're gonna need another device, a vacuum machine. And in my case, I'm sticking it in my professional vacuum machine that is actually built with a vacuum chamber inside of it. If you don't have one of these vacuum machines, you can buy a cheaper version costing around 99 euros. That will allow you to slowly pull vacuum in the bag and seal it off. Both are extra expenses that you have to make. And the final piece is the most easy one to do. I took a tray that I bought at IKEA for around 5 euros that has a rack in it. I loaded it up with coarse salt on the bottom and then I put the rack in and on top I place the meat. Now this whole thing goes into the fridge but I do have to take care that I don't put other food items in that might be able to spoil the meat. And now after four weeks I want to go check it out because I'm super curious to see what the meat actually looked like. Would it be gone bad? Does it still look good? Did it dry too much? Let's find out. This is my dry aging cabinet and as you can see I got multiple projects going on among which that beautiful ribeye that we just did. It definitely looks dry aged, it smells good. So let's check out the other ones. And this is my regular refrigerator. Granted, it's a little large, but it holds my umai and my regular dry aged steak. This is my dry aged bag version and it looks like you would expect. A plastic bag with a piece of meat in it and it really darkened up. So that's given me a lot of confidence that this project is a success. And here we have the old school project, a tray of salt with a ribeye steak in it. And it looks good, nice and dry aged, but is it good? And here we have our three dry aged steak. We've got our dry aged cabinet dry aged steak. We got the dry aged bag dry aged steak and the salt tray fridge dry aged steak. Let's take a look at the first one, the dry aged cabinet steak. As you can see, the beef dried out and formed this beautiful dark pellicle. I can also see that there's some white spots in front of it, which is a mold. This in itself is not a problem since we're gonna cut the outside off. And we do wanna make sure that this beef has no strange odor to it. So sniffing the beef is very important. And I can tell you, there is no fragrance to this beef whatsoever. And that means that the pellicle sealed everything out and none of those fragrances of the beef that sits inside are coming out. That's a good thing. Let's take a look inside. It's tough to cut through the pellicle, but it's easy. Whoa. <laughs> you see, we have a thin pellicle, beautiful dark red meat on the inside, a little bit of fat cap right there left. 
This looks like an amazing stick. And when you press it, it almost doesn't change shape or doesn't fall over. Maybe I'm even able to take three sticks out of this single cut. There we go. Oh yes, looking good. The final one. Absolutely beautiful, great intramuscular fat. That's one delicious looking steak. And now I'm gonna take a look at the Umai Dry Aid Steak, sealed to perfection. And as you can see, the bag and the meat became one pellicle. That is the result of a good vacuum machine combined with this membrane bag. Now of course I gotta remove the bag first before I start cutting into it. The pellicle of the steaks looks really weird because of the imprint of the Umai bag. I'm getting a much stronger smell from this steak compared to the dry aged cabinet. It actually has fragrance. The dry aged cabinet, you couldn't smell a thing. Now I'm getting a more of tones of acidity. So that means a lot of moisture is still on the inside of the steak and hasn't been able to go out like you would have with a dry aged cabinet. I've done this plenty of times and I know it's gonna be okay. However, I do recommend getting this out leaving it in the fridge without the bag on so it has some time to get that smell off of it. Now let's cut into it and take a closer look inside. Easy pellicle to cut through. Let's open it up. Wow, that is one good looking steak. Beautiful dark red color. Absolutely insane. Great marbling. Very, very little pellicle on the outside. That means very little waste. Now let's cut a steak out of this very easy to cut once again. Firmed up nicely, a little less firm than the other one. So we got a little wiggle left, but overall great result. And because of that pellico, I can easily cut three to four steaks out of this with less waste than the dry edge cabinet version. And this is the last project, the original version of dry aging in your fridge. It looks really good. We got a nice pellicle. It firmed up nicely and there's no fragrance whatsoever. A little more than the dry aged cabinet, I must admit. However, nothing compared to the dry aged bags. Now I want to take a look on the inside and see if this actually worked. Again, easy to cut through. A little discoloration to get to the good part. And there we have it, a beautiful steak, dry aged in my home fridge with a nice thin pellicle. However, the discoloration on the inside is a little more than the Umai dry aged bag and comparable to the dry aging cabinet. Great intramuscular fat. Now let's see how many steaks I can get out of this. Three beautiful steaks, looking good, firmed up nicely. Absolutely gorgeous. And now finally, I got my side-by-side -side comparison of the steaks. And again, the dry edge cabinet, the Umai bag, and the home fridge. And there's a lot of difference in between these steaks. You can clearly see that the dry edge cabinet has a big pellicle, bigger than all the other steaks. The Umai dry edge bag has very little pellicle, but it has that little smell of acidity that a rata would not have. And the home dry age fridge actually looks pretty okay. It has some discoloration on the edges, but I think we're gonna get a pretty good result out of it. But having steaks on your cutting board doesn't mean a thing. I wanna test these things as they should be tested. I'm gonna be cooking my steaks on the Napoleon Phantom Prestige. This thing is an absolute beast, but the good thing about this is it has a stainless steel grill grate. This thing holds so much power, it's gonna blow your mind and it's absolutely perfect to grill my steaks with. First, I wanna get it up to temperature and I'm gonna turn on two burners. And by doing so, I created the direct zone and an indirect zone. On the indirect zone, I'm gonna let my steaks come up to temperature. And once they got the temperature that I want, I'm gonna sear them off on the direct heat. I'm gonna give each of these steaks their individual thermometer so I get all of the temperature spot on. And I'm looking for a 54 degrees Celsius core temperature. I just got the notification on my phone that the steaks reached the core temperature of 54 degrees Celsius. So I'm taking them off and let them rest on the board. And now I'm gonna fire up my side burner. 
This thing is an infrared sizzle zone and it's getting temperature up to 900 degrees Celsius. All I need to do is turn it on, wait for five seconds and then hit ignition. Now it's time to grill steaks. Now with any dry aged steak, you shouldn't expect to see the beautiful pink. What I'm looking for is if I cooked it to perfection and I measure the temperature and don't look at how great it is on the inside. And this is important because you might knock a steak and say, hey, it's not cooked to perfection, but if it's dry aged, it should be grayer than expected. So there we go. Let's slice into the first one. Still nice and pink with a little gray and definitely feels firm. The steak dry edge in a dry edge bag is much easier to slice into and the color is even a little grayer. The final steak, the fridge steak, slices easy, has got still a little bit of pink color on it, but overall looks like a good steak. All they need now is a little bit of finishing salt now, let's perform the taste test. First one, the dry-aged cabinet steak. Mm-hmm. Mm nice and juicy. Slight dry flavor. That was a good reference steak. Now, let's try the umi bag steak. Mm. Juicier, but less dry aged flavor. Five weeks. Good steak. Uh, be, being a little bit drier. Hmm. Final one, dry aged in the fridge. And this one looks more tender. Tender, juicy, not as much dry aged flavor as the first two. Hmm. Different dry aged flavor than the one in the bag, but the same level of heaviness. Well, this is a good experiment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, there's no complaining here. All of these steaks are amazing. They're all dry aged, they're all amazing. And we're kind of like nitpicking at what is best here. So, but that also in itself means something. Yeah. Because with the dry aged cabinets, that's a big investment. If you didn't see the vlog that I put out when I bought these, they were crazy expensive. So definitely check that out. Now for me, it makes sense to buy something like that because I can put fish in there, I can put pork in there. It's like a storage. It's all cool things that I need for what I do but you might not need it at home. The bag is very easy to do. You're still gonna need a vacuum machine. And this with a salt tray, it's so easy to do. You just stick it in the fridge. The only problem is you can't really use that fridge for other things. Like no. don't put, I don't know, something crazy in there, something smelly that's gonna mess up the whole flavor profile of the beef. They're doing it in your own fridge. Maybe a leftover fridge. I don't know if that's a luxury thing, but hey, maybe you- Beer fridge. You, or maybe you're getting a new fridge. Drink empty the beer fridge and then just- Try stick, this. Stick a steak in it. See if it works. And I think that it works perfectly. I think so too. Hope you guys enjoyed this show and don't forget to check out the next video. And leave us a big thumbs up and a comment down below. We tried a different setting today. See you guys next time. Until then, keep on eating steak. And eat smakelijk. That's right. Cheers. You can't see the dog behind the table. It's really there. <laughs>